Back to our top story this morning, a possible uh, deal for a short-term debt ceiling extension. Uh, futures pointing to a higher open on hopes uh, of an agreement. Elon Mui joins us uh, from Washington with the latest. We really, I think Manchin had to come out and say, no filibuster, I'm not doing it, before things got serious again. And, and that sort of seemed like it, like both sides said, okay, we got to get so we got to figure something out. And that's when it started, I think. Yeah, that filibuster storyline kind of lived and died very quickly there. But the negotiations went on late into the evening on Capitol Hill. But there was still no official deal on the debt ceiling. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said that the two sides were making good progress, but not there yet. And he hoped to be able to announce an agreement this morning instead. Now, Republicans have offered to support a short-term increase in the debt limit that would allow the government to keep borrowing money into December. But Democrats would have to target a specific dollar amount for that new cap. They couldn't just waive it all together. Republicans hope the extra time would give Democrats a chance to pass a longer term fix through the reconciliation process and without GOP help. But Democrats are rejecting that idea explicitly in some cases. What's my reaction to his so-called offer? Sure. Just what I said, it's BS. He should stop playing games, get out of the way so that the 50 Democrats can avoid what would be an economic catastrophe. Now, others were more optimistic. Senator Chris Murphy tweeted that it sucks that McConnell only agreed to extend the debt ceiling until December. But he said a short-term deal gives Democrats the space to finish Build Back Better negotiations, which brings up a good point, Joe. Congress is now just punting all of its fiscal deadlines until the end of the year. So we're going to be right back here again soon. Back over to you. And as we pointed out, um, in when we talk about this at the top of the show, there, there's something else happening in November between now and December. We'll see who you ever heard. That? Someone once said elections have consequences. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, <laughs> do you hear Terry McAuliffe said, well, yeah, I'm not doing as well in Virginia. Biden is not popular here. It's like, yeah. what? he's your yeah, president. Joe, I, you, Joe, I, mean, I, I live in I live in a swing district. I live in a swing district in it, Virginia. It, and this race from just judging from the um, you know, boards and the signs that I see put up in people's yards. It's really tight. It's amazing. That education, th I, I, I don't know. I, I think that in certain, I'm going to pick on a certain party, but uh, people are misjudging, I think, the public sentiment about a lot of these things. I, 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 I don't know about this latest uh, Merrick Garland, you know, that parents are terrorists now for but talking about uh, for talking about what happens in schools? It's, I, I don't know if most the Americans fi the fight really are between on. Yeah, go ahead. The fight, between progressives, the fight between progressives and moderates, that was playing out around the infrastructure bill versus the social spending package. I mean, that's playing out in states and localities, you know, across yeah. the country. And so that tension within the Democratic Party is just going to be on display November 2nd. And that could influence, you know, how which party are, are feeling their oats in December to really push, you know, so the, the you know, it's your fault that we're going to default on our debt. You can't keep, you know, they but they do that so well. I mean, what, what's a person what is a citizen supposed to really believe um, when both sides just it's their fault. So. All right. Ilan, thank you.